Hi guys. It is a cool, brisk evening. Cool, brisk, late May evening here. In the collapse of global industrial civilization, we have a table full of apex predators here. This little chipmunk predator here in the middle, this little apex predator has been in big trouble today. And he's ended up on the chain for the rest of the summer because he is an apex predator uh, who, among other things, has no brain about cars. And we're going to be talking about apex predators in cars. What is it? It is Tuesday night, May 24th. 2022, and uh, it's been a while since I've checked in, uh, well, I check in all the time, but it's been a while since we at Collapse Chronicles have checked in uh, with fellow Collapsitarian Reynard Loki, I love that name, Reynard Loki, with his, uh, his own... Uh, Doomer blog called Earth Food Life. Uh, Reynard's a little bit, I don't think he'll mind me saying this, he's a little bit of an apocaloptimist. But uh, in this week's roundup, uh, Reynard has started us off with this article by a fellow named Jeffrey Dunnick. Jeffrey Dunnick from the Independent Media Independent Media Institute is where this article was originally published. Jeffrey is Furs for Life coordinator at Panthera, a global wildcat conservation organization. So uh, Tigger wants to say thank you. And uh, what do we have here? Is this a clouded leopard, or a, I guess that is a white tiger? But we're going to be talking about apex predators getting run over by cars. Take it away. <clears throat> the human mania for road building is a threat to the great apex predator species. Well, not to mention all the other species, uh, apex predator or not. Uh, the roadkill in those areas of the planet that still have roadkill. Uh, I could do a whole roadkill rant, but um, this is uh, this, this roadkill rant. Okay. Tigers. Clouded leopards and, I guess, regular leopards are among the 10 apex predators most threatened by the world's roads. And notice they're not saying cars here. They're saying roads, which are, you know, without roads, there would be no cars there. So this is one of the one of the many bright green lies about electric vehicles is the road does not care what kind of car or truck or whatever is driving down it. Okay? Roads are a bigger threat to the planet than cars. And it makes no difference whether the car is a gas-sucking car or an electric car. If you're an apex predator getting run over by a damn car, an electric car can run over an apex predator as well as uh, any other car. <clears throat> but this is not a electric vehicle rant. This is a road building rant. Okay. Designed for speed and efficiency, roadways across the globe are 
effectively killing wildlife whose futures are intrinsically linked to the future of the planet. Apex predators, those species including big cats like tigers and leopards who sit at the top of the food chain and ensure the health of all biodiversity. A new study I co-authored confirms that apex predators in Asia currently face the greatest threat from roads, likely due to the region's high road density and the numerous apex predators still found there that have not been run over or put in the stew pot. Eight out of the 10 species most impacted by roads were found in Asia with the sloth bear, the tiger, the dull, the Asiatic black bear, and the clouded leopard heading the list, you know, getting run over by roads. Now, you will never hear the words Chinese Belt and Road Initiative anywhere in this article. Just in case you cannot figure this out for yourself, this is an article about the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative. Okay, the outlook for the next 30 years is even more dire. More than 90% of the 25 million kilometers, 25 million kilometers, I think that's 16, 17 million miles of new global road construction expected between now and 2050, can you say Chinese Belt and Road Initiative, 90, more than 90% of the 25 million kilometers will be built in developing nations that host critical ecosystems in rich biodiversity areas. One more time, Chinese Belt and Road Initiative. Proposed road developments across Africa, the Brazilian Amazon, and Nepal are expected to intersect roughly 500 protected areas. Yes, protected areas. Don't get me off on a protected area rant. If it has a new road running through it, it is not a protected area. Protected area is getting right up there with sustainable development as one of the oxymoron bright green lies of the 21st century. If you ever hear the word protected area, you are being greenwashed. All right. Um, this development directly threatens the core habitats of apex predators, not to mention all of the animals they eat, found in these regions and will potentially disrupt the functioning and stability of their ecosystems. This is particularly concerning where road developments will impact areas of rich biodiversity and where conservation gains have been so painstakingly achieved. Ironically, as we celebrate the year of the tiger this year, road construction in Nepal is expected to bisect tiger strongholds, threatening to reverse 
the remarkable and previously inconceivable progress made to conserve the world's remaining 4,500 wild tigers from extinction. In the Brazilian Amazon, 36,500 kilometers, I, that's, I think, roughly 25,000 miles, pretty much you know, enough new roads in the Brazilian Amazon alone to encircle the planet. Uh, future roads will be built or upgraded inside the home ranges of pumas, ocelots, and jaguars. Naturally, the African Union's development corridors one more time, the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative in the African Union's development corridors are designed to promote development and drive investment in previously ignored areas, which is the point of the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative. While Martin, I love this one, while marginalized communities must be given access to life-saving development infrastructure and development, yes, this goal can be achieved while also conserving Africa's fragile ecosystems and at-risk apex predator populations. Okay, I have no idea what hopium uh, crack pipe Jeffrey just loaded for that ridiculous statement. That, that, that statement is patently absurd on every facet of it. Anybody with a brain the guy writing this knows this. Reynard Loki knows that that statement is bullshit. I'm sorry for the strong language here on Collapse Chronicles. That's what it is. Absolute, unadulterated horseshit. Okay. And then he goes back to reality. As it now stands, the development plan in Tanzania's Serengeti National, inside, you know, the, the most famous national park in Africa, Tanzania's Serengeti National Park in particular is expected to devastate one of the world's greatest animal migrations, causing a domino effect on healthy apex predator populations. Uh, this is why there will be no large mammals in Africa by 2050. Sub-Saharan Africa is the, you know, is the poster child of the sixth uh, mass extinction unfolding on the planet. And uh, it would be real nice if they could have mentioned how much of this crap China is paying for. All right. It is important to remember that roads do not just kill the animals trying to cross them. They divide habitat into increasingly smaller fragments. Apex predators are disproportionately impacted by discontinuous habitats due to their need to roam large, undisturbed areas. Research has found that predators such as jaguars will completely avoid all roads in their habitat, often isolating individuals from the rest of their population. The ubiquity of roads also presents a barrier for mating between jaguars. This ultimately reduces the genetic diversity 
and strength of the population and is a particular threat to apex predators due to their large home range and small population sizes. Another unintended consequence of rampant road development is increased poaching. There is nothing unintended about it. These poachers are sitting around intending to wait for this road to open up. Okay? Uh, another intended consequence of rampant road development is increased poaching. Roads facilitate easy access to previously wild areas, allowing for the expansion of permanent human settlement. More roads makes it easier for poachers to reach remote wildlife populations and facilitate the transport of illegal wildlife products across a greater area. Indeed, snares for wildlife and poachers are often found at higher rates close to roads and human settlements. Imagine that. Okay, now here comes the hopium. Here comes the apocaloptimism. Despite these grim consequences, there is a way, there is a way to achieve human development objectives while allowing predators to thrive. That is a flat out lie. That is, that, that is pure crap. And, and, and this guy at Panthera knows it. What the hell is he smoking? That every word in that sentence is absurd. Apparently there was a typo in that sentence. As the real truth is, there is no way, there is no way to achieve human development objectives while allowing predators to thrive. When road projects are deemed vital to the development of an area and the surrounding communities, they must be built with wildlife in mind. Yes, intentionally located well outside of protected areas and predator strongholds. Wildlife crossing structures such as animal, such as tunnels and underpasses need to be integrated into road planning and budgetary decisions from the get-go. It is only through inclusive planning processes where the voices of local communities, conservation scientists, road engineers, and government officials are all equally weighted that sustainable road development can be achieved. There we go! Sustainable road development. You know, I was just ranting last night uh, about the, these 100 scholars, uh, you know, hitting the BS detected button on this sustainable development horseshit, and then you add the word road to it. Okay, one more time. There is no such thing as sustainable road development. Road development of all the unsustainable developments on the planet, road development is the single most unsustainable of them all. Well, I guess it's got some competition uh, to, to, to suggest uh, the, the very notion of sustainable road development 
is, is to uh, it is beyond hopium. It is lunacy. It is a big fat lie. And okay, here we go. I have you know I need to do a rant on Costa Rica, and we're going to come back later. Here we go. I lived in Costa Rica for three years. Okay, guys. I lived there for three years. Uh, Costa Rica offers an excellent example of this type of collaboration. Although often considered the gold standard of conservation, this, this is a whole nother app, Costa Rica hosts the highest density of roads in Central America. With one stretch of the Limon Route 257 responsible for 4.6 wildlife road kills per hour primarily due to speeding. Now at least when I lived in Costa Rica the number one, the number one most deadly country on planet Earth for highway deaths, I'm talking human deaths, not all the animals, was Costa Rica. Costa Rican drivers are insane. They do not stop for little children, old ladies, whatever. They sure as hell ain't going to stop for an anteater or whatever. They probably go out of their way to uh, run over animals in Costa Rica. Yes primarily due to speeding, yes, by monitoring the highways for all road kills, conservation scientists have identified key wildlife crossing areas and informed the construction of structures to ensure their safe passage from arboreal crossings for tree dwelling species to underpasses for the flat footed ones. Critically, scientists have formed a strong partnership with local and national governments who fully support the concept of wildlife friendly roles. Okay, guys, we're going to cut the crap and, and, and talk about these goddamn, uh, the, 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 now, now here in the U.S., the, these wildlife overpasses and underpasses, I'm going to give the uh, okay for. All right, here, probably since I never erase my emails, I could probably find this email from my buddy, uh, you know, down there in Costa Rica. This was uh, down there in southwest Costa Rica where I spent most of my time. So, you know, they put this new highway in. This was, when was this? Uh, probably 11 or 12 years ago. So anyway, they, 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 they put this highway, this is what they're talking about here. Made this big greenwashing lie crap about how they were saving the animals in Costa Rica for, from getting run over. So what they did was they made these wildlife uh, crossings, you know, so, so, so what they did, and they do this uh, in the U.S. too, so they put fences along the new highway and they literally funnel the animals through these underpasses. Kind of what they do with Florida Panthers in the Everglades. So, what do you think happened when they did this? So they put these in there, and this, this, as my buddy was explaining to me, obviously, what do you think happened? The, the, the damn uh, Costa Rican version of a redneck, all of that, all of this bush meat was funneled right into them. They sat there at the wildlife crossings shooting the animals coming through. More animals were dying by being shot 
by the Costa Rican rednecks than were being saved from being run over. It, w it, it was a, a wide open slaughter uh, of all of these animals who at least had a chance to get across the damn road without getting run over. Instead, all of these Costa Rican rednecks were down there with, with you know, with their rifles and their snares and everything else. It, 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 you know, it was an absolute joke, and, and they're still talking about this crap. You know, last time I was in Costa Rica, I was working at a, at a, uh, what I was doing was we were rehabilitating Scarlet McCall's out into the, uh, you know, re the reestablishing uh, Scarlet McCall's, uh, you know, into the in, into the rainforest, and so when I was so it was sixteen of these birds that uh, I w I was helping, uh, you know, down there in the forest, and uh, the first so we released eight of them. And within two weeks, four of them had been shot by, uh, you know, by the same uh, group of Costa Rican rednecks that, that had shot all the original ones. The, the only place that the Scarlet McCalls were safe where, you know, where, where these uh, gringos, where these rich gringos gone down there uh, to Costa Rica and, and built their mansions. All right, that's the only place that the Scarlet McCalls could, could escape being shot uh, was living on the estates uh, of these rich damn gringos. You know, this whole thing about, we're, we're, and we're going to get to uh, hydroelectric dams here in a minute. But let's get back to this story now that we've read between the lines. I, I need to send this rant to this clueless moron writing this, uh, you know, with a little reality check. Anyway, where were we? Uh, from Wildlife Friendly Roads. Our future and health are forever intertwined with those of non-human animals, and people also benefit from Wildlife Friendly Roads. The recolonization of pumas or cougars in North Dakota is estimated to have reduced cost of deer vehicle collisions by more than one billion dollars. I would really like to dissect uh, that that uh, statement, and scientists estimate a recolonization of the eastern United States by pumas or cougars could reduce deer vehicle collisions by 22 percent over 30 years, averting 21,000 human injuries and 155 human fatalities and saving more than two billion dollars in costs. Uh, again, uh, don't have time to tear that one apart. Okay. From wildlife vehicle collisions to unintentionally creating new pathways for poachers to target our planet's most cherished wildlife, such as building these wildlife corridor road crossings in third world countries. Okay, there is a perfect example of unintentional, literally, unintentionally, literally creating new pathways for poachers to target our planet's most cherished wildlife is to funnel all the wildlife, you know, every five miles, 
And, 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 and if they're lining up in Costa Rica to shoot all the animals, imagine Sub-Saharan Africa doing this. Like this is ever going to happen in Sub-Saharan Africa anyway. Okay. Roads pose a major threat to apex predators. With research confirming that this threat will only intensify over the next 30 years, there is now a small window of opportunity. There is a small window of opportunity. All right. To ensure that these developments do not unduly impact our natural world. Yes, by planning more, by planning roads more carefully, avoiding their construction in protected areas, and adopting mitigation measures like wildlife crossings, funneling the wildlife directly into the crosshairs of the poachers, we can protect apex predators and the critical role they play in the health and survival of our planet. What do you think, little Mr. Apex Predator? You think you're an apex predator because you eat chipmunks. You are not an apex predator. You're about here, you're about a third of the way up the food chain, Sancho. Do you know that? That there's all kinds of stuff here who could eat you? Anyway, thank you, Jeffrey Dunnink, for that. Uh, then there's this long story about saving jaguars in the U.S. Good luck. Then we have this one paragraph story. Uh, and this will be fodder for a future rant. Drought, food prices from Ukraine war leave millions in Africa starving. More, th this is from NPR, more than 23 million people are experiencing extreme hunger in Ethiopia. I'm going to hopefully be eating at an Ethiopian restaurant uh, tomorrow night. My potential date when I suggested we go to an Ethiopian restaurant, she said, I, I didn't realize Ethiopians had food, was her comment. More than 23 million people are experiencing extreme hunger in Ethiopia, Somalia, and Kenya according to a new report by Oxfam and Save the Children, that is up from over 10 million last year. The region's worst drought in 40 years is being exacerbated by conflict and the corona panic, and the war in Ukraine has sent food prices soaring to record levels. Okay, again, uh, this will be a future rant. All right. I just wonder, okay, let's see, the worst drought in 40 years, 23 million people experiencing extreme hunger. I'm going to take a wild guess that the population of Ethiopia, Somalia, and Kenya uh, is minimally 23 million people more than it was 40 years ago. So, if 23 million people had never been born in Ethiopia, Somalia, and Kenya over the last 40 years, how many people would be starving? Okay? There is one way to cure global food insecurity, and that is people who are never born cannot starve to death, but that is a, uh, another ramp for another day. 
I am going to completely not insult my intelligence or yours with low-cost gel film can pluck drinking water from desert air. There you go. So, of course, this, this, this magic stuff sucking water out of the air for two dollars you get six liters for about a gallon and a half they're talking about how millions of people can now have drinking water that comes out to what is that two dollars for a gallon and a lot of these people they're talking about have two dollars a day total and they're supposed to spend two dollars to get six liters of water? Who the hell are they kidding? A anyway, but uh, we want to talk about uh, this other article. Hydropower dams are a false climate solution. Yes. <clears throat> a river is a spectacular living corridor that feeds forests, fisheries, coastal ecosystems, and farmlands, transports life-sustaining organic matter and nutrients, provides drinking water, fosters cultural connections, and prevents carbon dioxide from entering the atmosphere. A river supports staggeringly rich biodiversity, one way we negate rivers' many benefits is by building dams. Once considered a renewable way to harness the power of rivers, hydroelectric dams are now better known for their adverse impacts. They destroy a river's biodiverse ecosystems. They decimate the food security and livelihoods of local communities and produce harmful methane that exacerbates climate change. Dams are costly to build, difficult to maintain, and are not climate resilient or competitive against proven clean energy alternatives like solar and wind power. That is from uh, Josh Clem and Eugene Simonov from uh, their article, Why Hydro Power Dams Are a False Climate Solution. Okay, so I don't know in that full article whether they mentioned Costa Rica, which is always being held up as the poster child, the UN's little poster child of green, clean, green, renewable, save the planet energy is Costa Rica. And where do you think this clean green energy is coming from, it's coming from hydro power. The reason that Costa Rica is uh, like the, you know, the country, I think they're making claims, I, they say they're pretty close to 100% clean green energy, it is because of hydro power. Okay. I wrote a book uh, about 20 years ago called Pura Vida, The Waterfalls and Hot Springs of Costa Rica. You can go look it up, okay? Pura Vida, The Waterfalls and Hot Springs of Costa Rica. It was 30 years ago this year when I was writing that book, and I think there were 32 waterfalls uh, in, in, in that book and over and over again 30 years ago when I was going there exploring these absolutely gorgeous uh, you know waterfalls in these jungle canyons I mean like right out of uh, you know Jurassic Park the the the, the 
producers of Jurassic Park were actually interviewing me to help them find a uh, a waterfall, you, you know, for that for that movie. But uh, when I was there 30 years ago, over and over and over again, it, you know, the locals were down there telling me, "Gringo, you understand that this gorgeous waterfall in this jungle canyon." is getting ready to get turned into a hydroelectric plant. My guess is half of those waterfalls uh, in my book, Puerto Vida, uh, have been turned in to hydroelectric plants. It, 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 this bullshit uh, about hydroelectric being a clean, green, renewable energy uh, and, and holding Costa Rica up. Costa Rica, you know, Costa Rica is, is about, I think, the size of this county. My guess is, is that a larger percentage of Costa Rica is underwater that hundreds of miles of these gorgeous, biodiverse rainforest canyons have been absolutely destroyed. Millions of animals flooded out of their homes. Uh, the, the, the destruction, the unbridled environmental destruction in Costa Rica from these goddamn hydroelectric dams. It, 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 is, it, it is a tragedy. It, it, it is an insult against this planet. And for those blankety blanks at, at, at the goddamn United Nations and their sustainable development goals holding up hydropower uh, as a sustainable energy source and, and then holding up Costa Rica. Costa Rica, one of the biggest environmental criminals uh, in the history of this planet as the poster child for, for saving this planet uh, with this greenwashing, bright green lie. It, 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 it's, it, it's crap. Uh, anyone swallowing this horse shit for one minute that, that Costa Rica uh, is, is some sort of little, uh, what did they say? I can't remember the term they used, golden boy of conservation. You know, everything from, from just completely obliterating hundreds of miles uh, of uh, riparian corridor in the rainforest down there, uh, right on up to, to these Costa Rican rednecks uh, shooting the animals coming out uh, from these wildlife crossings. Uh, it, it is a bright green lie. I'm not even going to get into all of this uh, reforestation. I could tell the story about how my buddy had 84 hectares. What is that? About uh, 200 acres uh, of teak forest stolen from him. When they went, to, you know, he was reforesting, and the rednecks down there literally chopped down like 200 acres uh, of forest. And then when he went down there, no say, gringo. I don't know what happened to your 200 acres of reforest. Anyway, it's crap, people. Okay? It's crap. Take it for someone who's been there, been there, done that. It's a bunch of bullshit. But anyway, I've got a table full of apex predators. And this little apex predator thinks he's an apex predator. He's not. You're not an apex predator like that. No, you're not. You are not an apex predator. So, I gotta freshen my drink and call it a night. I highly suggest you enjoy your own apex predators while you still can. Bye, guys. Get him, Tigger. Get him, Tigger.
Yeah, damn digger.